to Friday's reflections. I hope you've had a good couple of weeks. I missed last week's reflections. I had um, my grandson staying for four for four nights. It was half term and he came over just to have some, some quality time. The girls stayed in Luton um, with their parents and, and I had Shaquille and we had a lovely time and he's at that He's at that kind of transitional age now. He's eight, he's gonna be nine in August and he's in year four. And he's not a small child anymore. Um, and it's really lovely. You can have really great conversations with him. He's interested in things. He asks lots of questions. And I was just really um, taken by how he, was, how he was changing, how in a sense he was being transformed as he was growing, growing up and we did, we did lots of lovely things. The weather was atrocious, absolutely atrocious. So we couldn't get out as much as we wanted to, but we did go bowling, which you can do in the rain. And that was great fun. And um, we went to the cinema and saw my, the film Migration, which was, which was good fun too. We managed a couple of walks. We managed a, a one night, the sky was relatively clear. So we did a, a star walk and took some hot chocolate with us and just walking along the streets, but it was lovely. And he was really excited and he could pick out Orion's belt because it's quite a distinctive trio of stars, isn't it? And, um, and that was lovely. So he was beginning to think about beyond the earth and constellations and all of that kind of thing. And we went to an RSPB reserve. It's in Cambridgeshire. It's called Falmy. It's quite a, a small one, but it's beautiful and well worth a visit. It's you you don't you won't see heaps and heaps of species, but but you will see the most beautiful um, plants. Uh, the water's beautiful, and that's chalk aquifer there again. So the water's really clear. Uh, there are deer butterflies not at this not not quite yet but but later in the year lots of butterflies dragonflies um and th there are lovely birds there you'll see marsh harriers kingfishers geese ducks and, and other things um but it's not one of those reserves you go to tick off loads of things but it is a beautiful beautiful reserve um to go to and it's never um it hasn't got a visitor center or anything so it's never too crowded and sometimes if you go really early in the morning you can be almost the only people there which is which is just wonderful so he really enjoyed that and we stopped for brunch on the way back at this uh really lovely kind of artisan cafe where they have a coffee roastery and He's developing his taste and things. So he, he had crushed avocado on sourdough toast with a poached egg. And he was really, um, really pleased with that. And he's begun to like coffee. He doesn't have fresh coffee yet. He's tasted it, but he's begun to get his, his palates changing as he, as he changes, as he grows older. And it made me think about change and and how change is the one thing in the world that we cannot avoid can we and yet most of us don't like change or or don't like certain changes we like the the familiar and things we're comfortable with but if i think in in my life when i look back to um to childhood if i, if I childhood if i think how much the world has changed it's phenomenal and there's nothing i can do to resist that change, but I can select the changes I want to embrace and the changes that I think might not be good for me or for for my family. And um, and it's you know just even looking at the um, at the countryside at the moment, it's changing, isn't it? The the trees that they're, they're starting. Some of the early ones, the blackthorns and the hawthorns, are starting to 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 show their leaves. But but most of them are, uh, of the trees are kind of buds but not bursting forth yet there's some blossoms coming blossoms coming out but there's almost a kind of a, a, a pregnancy about the trees they're about to burst forth and give life and and again that's part of the transformation of their of their year and I'm really looking forward to that and there's beautiful colors aren't they of the daffodils and um, the snowdrops have gone now and I've got some little dwarf cyclamen out and they're lovely and some muscari and that beautiful blue and and loads of other things coming out. There's been some dwarf irises, and it's such a lovely time. And in a sense, it's transforming, isn't it, from winter to spring. And um, with that in mind, I'd like to read you this this scripture. It's about um, it's about changing, really. 
and it's from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians and it's chapter 3 and it's from verse 12 through to um, verse 18. It's the New Testament and as usual I'm reading from the NRSV. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. And that's the wonderful thing about knowing Jesus, is that he, he loves us so much. He loves all people and desires all people to be saved, to come to know him. He paid the price for every human being, not just some, but it's up to us whether we accept him. And he loves us so much, he draws us to himself, but he doesn't leave us as we are. If you can remember when you first came to, to faith, what you were like then and what you're like now, you'll notice how he changes us, he softens our hearts, um, he works on our character and you, you find you have the, the fruits and the gifts of the spirit and you, you become, well, as you go on, he draws, he makes you more like him. But equally, this is the thing that I can never really understand or even explain. The more he changes at you, the more you become the essence of who he created you to be. And if you don't know him, you really should ask questions, go to a church, read a Bible, because finding Jesus is the most incredible thing that ever happened in my life and the life of my family. I don't know where I'd be, I don't know how my life would have would have turned out if I hadn't if I hadn't found Jesus, although he was there all the time, I just didn't notice him. And all I can tell you is he doesn't force change upon you. He doesn't judge you. He overwhelms you with love. And as you're in relationship with him and as you yield to, to him, like clay in the potter's hands, he transforms you, just as it says here, from one degree, degree of glory to another. And so I just want to leave you with that. I don't want to add anything else to that, but truly he is an amazing, amazing God. And um, I'm going to end now in prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we see transformation all around us in creation. Uh, I think of, of um, caterpillars, Lord, and how you transform them into creatures that can fly, uh, creatures of great beauty, creatures that pollinate. And there's that process in the transformation where they go from being the caterpillar to the to the moth or the butterfly, that where they're in the dark, really, and they have to be still and allow the work to happen. And I just pray, Lord, for all of us who know you, to yield to your will, to allow you to transform us from one level of glory to another. And for those listening to, to this reflection who don't know you, Lord, I pray from deep within me that they would, they would hear something of you, in this message that they would be drawn to you and have a revelation of your unfailing and immense love for them. Um, and I don't ask these prayers any strength of my own, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, name above all names. I don't know what you're doing this weekend. I'm, um, I'm having a chilling day today. I'm going to go for a walk later. It's raining um, and... Uh, 
I, I want to get out and do my steps. I've been really, really good at that. And um, I want to have a really relaxing weekend. Actually, I've had quite a busy week, busy couple of weeks with various different bits and pieces. And I wanted to stop and just take some time to be and um, to be in God's presence and to appreciate the moment. So, um, yeah, to appreciate the moment and just allow allow myself to stop. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, if you're around on Sunday morning, it's our cafe church. The first month, the first Sunday in the month is always our cafe church. It's a slightly different style. You have your drink in the service rather than and after and there are tables and it's 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 more informal but but re equally reverential and um it's it's fantastic it's you if you haven't been before come along you're so welcome you'll be given a really warm welcome if you can't get to to Pansanger Church get to a church near you if you can't get to church open your bible or if you haven't got a bible look at something online if you know somebody who's a christian ask them their story ask them their testimony how do they how do they come to faith everybody's everybody's journey to christ is unique i've never heard two testimonies that are the same but but it's the same god who overwhelms us with his love so i look forward to sharing with you next week see you then